Hello travelers. I wanted to give you a channel update. So since I have finalized my plans for uh, 2023, for all the trips that I'm going to be taking, I wanted to share a little bit about them and also let you know something that is not directly a trip, but is definitely going to be a focus for the new year. So first the book trips. I'm going to be going on two cruise lines that I've never been on and two ships on lines that I have been on, but not on those ships. And finally, I'm going to revisit the very first Princess Cruise uh, ship that I ever took. So in addition to that, I'm actually going to get to tick mark off a couple of the bucket list items that I have. So it's going to be an exciting year. I am going to be doing a Princess Alaska cruise tour. And if you're not familiar with what that is, that's when you start or end on a land-based part of your trip and you also have a cruise in part of it as well and it's all booked through the same line so this is going to be through princess princess arguably is uh, one of the best in the business for alaska cruise tours they own all of the lodges up there a lot of times the other cruise lines will send people to their lodges uh and 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 you know rent out their lodges for their stuff too but you know this way you're you're sort of going to the source they also have these amazing glass domed rail cars when you're going up through denali so you can see everything and it's amazing and yet you're not freezing to death <laughs> which is always a bonus in alaska no matter what time of year it is uh, and also, of course, you, you don't have the bug problem, which uh, if you have been to Alaska during certain months of the season, bugs are out in force. So yeah, that's, that's a, a major bonus. And I think the rail gets you into areas of the park that you wouldn't be able to get through like a motor coach. So it's something I'm really looking forward to. I will also get to see uh, some new glaciers. Of course, you know, as part of this, I will get to see Denali, which is reportedly quite amazing. And uh, yeah, it's going to be very nice. I have, uh, th I think it's three days on land. And then after that, we do the cruise. And that cruise will be on the Grand Princess, which is the very first princess ship I was ever on. And so it will be fun to go back to her again. And then the next trip, I'm going to be doing my first transatlantic. Yes, and I'm doing it on Cunard's Queen Mary 2. I've never been on Cunard, so of course I've never been on Queen Mary 2. She is the last of the ocean liners. You know, it used to be that people would make that crossing and uh, they'd make it on a ship, not, a, not an airplane. And uh, she was built in 2003, so I'm not sure how much longer she's going to be around to do this crossing. Uh, if you're not familiar, ocean liners were built for this crossing in particular. So they're, they're, they're built to be able to handle the waves and the weather that you encounter and uh, better than a, just a cruise ship. And so I want to do this while I still can. And looking at the pictures of the ship on the, the ship tours that I've seen, there's a lot of the pictures of the old Hollywood and old, old, old you know, famous people who'd been on the ship and I'm really looking forward to seeing all the history and everything. Uh, my mother had a video store uh, back when video stores were such a big thing and so you know she really sort of exposed me to quite a lot of the old Hollywood movies, the old black and white movies and so it'll be like you know going and see some of, some of those people you know and that should be really nice. So it goes from New York to Southampton, England. And knowing that I was going to be in Southampton, I was looking around for what I was going to do and stumbled on a cruise with uh, P&O. And P&O is a British shipping line, uh, cruise line. And uh, one of their newer ships is the Iona or Iona. I think it's Iona. And it is doing a seven day Norwegian fjords cruise. I've always wanted to see the fjords. It leaves the day after I get into Southampton and it leaves from Southampton. So I'm just going to do an overnight hotel and then hop on another cruise ship for another week and go and see the fjords. And that's always been on my bucket list. So there's one that I'm sort of marking off. And then um, after I do the fjords, I will fly back home Unfortunately, there was no returning cruise ship conveniently located that I could just cruise back home, but alas. 
somehow I will manage. Um, and then another bucket list item is the Panama Canal for me. Last year I actually had one booked, but sadly I had to cancel it. And my day job actually has restrictions on what months I can travel on. And that window has been getting smaller and smaller and smaller as the team has also been getting smaller and smaller. And so the amount of time it takes for us to do the research that we do and release it uh, winds up being a much larger amount of time. And that's what I have to be there for, you know. So sadly, they are not going to see a lot of me during summer. It used to be that I could, you know, start traveling end of April, May, and now I can't even travel in June. And then I, I, my cutoff is also October, so it's going to be cramming a lot of trips in a very small window. So, Panama Canal. Anyway, um, I am going on the Emerald Princess in the summer, and um, it's going to be quite a nice one. It starts in L.A. I believe it ends in New York. And while I will briefly be in New York for the transatlantic, I think I might just uh, tack a couple days on the end of this one and sort of look around New York too. Since I've never been there, well, I will have been there briefly, but yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. And then um, my final trip of the season is going to be on the Carnival Miracle. I've been, of course, on Carnival many times, never been on the Miracle. So I'm looking forward to that. We are just going down to Catalina Island and Ensenada, both of which I've been to many times, but I am quite certain I can find something fun to do. And of course, I'll have a whole new ship to explore, at least a whole new ship to me. Oh, and lest I forget, I kicked this whole thing off with a drive up to Oregon to see my tattoo artist and to work on this second sleeve of mine, get some more work done. Um, I had to make sure that there was enough time for it to heal before my first cruise because it wouldn't be much fun to, to not be able to go into the pool and stuff um, until it's healed. So, now I mentioned that there were other plans that weren't directly a trip. Next year is going to be a milestone birthday for me, and so I've been looking at the trip I wanted to do, and I definitely wanted to make it another bucket list item. And it's going to be a trip to Jordan to see Petra. And if you are not familiar with Petra is, if you've seen the Indiana Jones movie where there is that uh, entrance to the city that's carved into the mountain, that's a real place. That's Petra. When you go to Petra, that, that facade that you see in the movie is called the Treasury. And that's one part of the site. Basically, another place that is carved into the mountainside um, on the site is called the Monastery. To get from the Treasury, which is the first thing you see when you get through the, the stone passageway uh, that leads to it, called the Sik, S-I-Q, is, um, is the Treasury. To get from the Treasury to the Monastery is over 800 steps, as in stairs, not as in just walking, stairs. And I know that I can't do 800 stairs right now without falling over dead or something, right? So my goal this year, well, in the next year, probably year and a half, between now and when I actually, you know, have the tour, uh, and I don't know the, the, the dates yet because they haven't released their 2024 dates yet. I'm doing a guided tour. I haven't mentioned that. So I'm doing a guided tour to Petra um, and Jordan, and um, we're also going to see Wadi Rum and the Dead Sea and some other sites around the area. And so it's a guided tour. And a guided tour is a really nice way to go to a, a place as a solo travel, traveler in particular because you're on your own, but you're with a group. And so you can travel solo, but you're still with a group of people. So you're not quite as vulnerable, especially as a woman um, in certain areas. And uh, they take care of the hotels. They take care of the transportation to whatever sites you're doing. Um, there are optional things you can do in addition to the things that are included in the tour. A lot of these tours also include the airfare, and so you get a good package price to do it. It's a really nice way to sort of get your bearings in a place you don't know, and you know, you'll have people with you and you can make friends with them and you can interact with them as much or as little as you want. Um, they usually will have some kind of single supplement if you want your own room. Some of them will also let you book with um, if you're a solo, they will also put two solos together. Um, it's up to you whether you want your own room private or not, and you pay for the privilege, of course, because, you know, they, they 
price these tours out with the idea that it's going to be two people and so you wind up with a solo supplement to make it up to that level. The tour is, uh, I think it's a week long, it's a week or nine days, I forget which, and it, it, you know, it includes the airfare from the west coast and what I'm really looking forward to though is being able to do that hike, to be able to do the, the climbs up to uh, up to where the monastery is. And so with that in mind, I am working on increasing my stamina. So one of the things that I haven't shared with the channel is that I used to be considerably larger. Um, and I lost, gosh, about 200 pounds. Uh, and then the pandemic hit and that weight started creeping back on, as it does. And uh, so, in addition to building my stamina, of course, is the idea that I could get a little bit smaller. And uh, to that end, I'm going to be focusing on how you can maintain or even reduce your weight, increase your stamina, all that sort of, you know, healthy stuff as you're traveling. Because I know people sometimes will put things on hold while they're doing weight loss or something. And it's like, you know what? life is short you never know when your last day is don't wait don't put things off until you the conditions are perfect you know i've had um i've had some deaths in in my family and and things going on that have really been making me think about this kind of thing and nobody knows when their last day is you just don't and uh don't put your life off for the conditions to be perfect or for you to be perfect before you go because you may just not go and it may be over and you may you know you lost those memories that you could have made and you lost the opportunity so anyway before i get too maudlin about this uh what i am trying to do is i'm going to be looking at the fitness opportunities on the cruise ships uh, a little more into what your workout could look like, what kinds of things they offer as far as classes. You know, the Princess Premier is offering fitness classes, so I'm really going to look into those on my cruise tour and also see what the other lines offer that I'm going to be going on because uh, it's something that people don't often focus on, especially cruise YouTubers, because, you know, usually we're out there to have fun. People frequently will go on a holiday and they don't want to think about fitness, and that's fine, but for people who do want to think about their fitness and do want to continue to either make progress or maintain whatever they have going on, it's information for them as well. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. It is, um, it's going to be an additional focus. It is not going to be the only focus of the channel. Uh, don't, don't worry. We are going to have regular content like we have before, and, uh, it's just going to sort of be extra spice sprinkled in. So, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I do invite you to and uh, click that notification bell so you are notified when I post new content. And I have lots of exciting trips going and I'm still working through editing the trips from last year. I actually preempted some of the programming for the new Prima and the new Celebration so that they would be out in a timely manner while everyone was really interested in them. And I'm going to be going back and doing editing of the other trips that I also did. So lots of good content coming out. I hope you'll join us. Thanks for watching. Solo Sue signing off.